Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome back to Hot News. If you hear any clinking and clacking, it's because they're repairing the air conditioning in our office, which has been working for three weeks, and now it's starting to get warm, and it's not nice, and yeah, thankfully, they're fixing it. Woo! So let's talk about the existential question of the day, which is an eternal struggle. This is one of the classic questions that doesn't seem to have an answer, which is, is water wet? Water's touching other water, which then would make it wet, and then it's water inside of water. Or you could say, because it's water, it can't be wet. What do you say? Is water wet? Let us know down below in the comments. And then, let's also talk about the tech video of the day. Again, my friends, if you want to do your user submissions for the tech video of the day that you want us to shout out, you can go over to our Discord, into the video suggestions channel there, and recommend yours. But today, we have a video coming from Gear Seekers. It's their Era ITX review, the new fractal design case that I want to get my hands on. Well, they have and they reviewed it and they're a pretty good channel they're b-roll delicious so go check them out give some love to that video you can check it out in the top right hand corner at that card so do that and now let's go ahead and talk about the news which is we get ray tracing for everybody reese give me a woo, woo. Ray, whoa <laughs> not what i was expecting <laughs> ray tracing has come out for everybody so the big announcement that came yesterday was that microsoft is updating their direct x api to be direct x 12 ultimate which kind of sounds like an nvidia marketing scheme because they have G-Sync and G-Sync Ultra or whatever the heck it's called. Direct X 12 Ultimate is basically the API that's going to support hardware-based ray tracing. And as you would know, NVIDIA is the only one that currently supports it. And in their promotional video for supporting the X 12 Ultimate, they're like, we've been doing this since 2018. Get on times, and Andy. Pathetic. But I just want to take a moment before we talk more about DX12 Ultimate. Their logo looks like Disney XD. It looks like they ripped off Disney's logo. First, I, I don't know what, I think it's the font choice and how they chose to do the X, the Roman numerals. It's, but it just, I don't like it. Same, same but different. So obviously NVIDIA taking this opportunity to showcase how dominant they've been over the past few years with hardware accelerated ray tracing. AMD took this opportunity to talk about the fact that RDNA 2, which is their upcoming generation of cards, will have ray tracing and then had a video which looked really bad. I mean, honestly, yes, it's a good showcase of ray tracing, but it's a really like campy scene of robots and like some, it, it just didn't look very appealing to me. But what do you think of it? I, I didn't, it didn't vibe with me at all. NVIDIA's like promotion for ray tracing looked way better in my humble opinion. But AMD and NVIDIA are both going to be supporting ray tracing and obviously DX12 Ultimate may be a key API for the Microsoft Xbox Series X moving forward now that they're using RDNA 2 which supports ray tracing. And for anybody who doesn't know, ray tracing just means that you have realistic lighting and shadows and reflections and basically everything that's lit in the video game looks like it should in real life. That would be full ray tracing. It takes a lot of computational horsepower power to do it, which is why we're only now getting around to doing it in 2020, because it takes some really advanced, dedicated hardware, and NVIDIA has been ahead on the game for that. But when I said ray tracing for everyone, I mean everyone, because we're talking about RDNA 2, which means that only people in the future on AMD are going to have ray tracing. Well, that's where Vulkan comes in, because three days ago, they announced that Vulkan has been updated to support ray tracing, and not just on RTX cards, but it can be supported on AMD cards. In case you remember, there's been several demos of Vulcan ray tracing in the past, I believe. Who did it? I think it was Crytek had a ray tracing demo, which they ran on a Vega 56. But obviously, NVIDIA is going to perform better on ray tracing just because they have hardware accelerator ray tracing built into the RTX cards, whereas the AMD cards have to do it through brute strength, and thereby it's probably going to run a little slower. But Vulkan API for ray tracing can be used by AMD now, NVIDIA now with their GTX series of cards, and even Intel can be supported with this. Are you really going to be wanting to ray trace on your Intel integrated? graphics that depends on how much of a masochist you are when it comes to your own video game experience but Vulcan ray tracing for everybody API now supports it you got DX 12 ultimate or Disney XD 12 ultimate I don't know what we should call it that's neither here nor there but now ray tracing is for everybody if you wanted your eyes to feast the gloriousness that is realistic lights hitting your eyeballs take that I want to leave you with this existential point it's not a question did you know that lamps in video games use real electricity just like regular lamps. But speaking of 
Did you know that GameStop is an essential business? At least according to GameStop's own management. It's finally come out, I believe it was Polygon had an article showcasing some of the memos that GameStop has been sending out to their store managers and employees, which basically says we're not going to comply with the call for non-essential businesses to shut down because GameStop is an essential business. How else are you gonna get through your quarantine, your lockdown or whatever's going on right now with you having to stay in your house because of Voldemort? How are you gonna do that without video games? Huh? How are you going to do that? I don't know. What it sounds like to me is GameStop keeping their retail stores open is essential for them to not collapse and die because it's not been any secret that GameStop's been in financial woes as of late. And they've been trying to turn it around, updating stores. They just got Reggie to join their board of directors. So there's been some changes that GameStop's been making. But at the same time, they're not essential during a lockdown quarantine setup at all whatsoever. So in response to this, GameStop gave a reply to Ars Technica saying that while GameStop is best known as a provider of gaming and home entertainment systems, we also offer a wide array of products and devices that are important to facilitate remote work, distance learning, and virtual connectivity. Are you talking about computers or are you talking about the mobile phones that you have trade-ins for? I've been, I've been in my local GameStops probably like a dozen times since I've moved back to the States and you have video games. It's just video games and merch. Is my pop collection gonna be what's going to help me to do remote working? Anyways, GameStop continued and said, while there are many businesses and organizations far more critical than ours, we believe we can have a positive impact during this very challenging time. We're complying with all state, county, city, and local ordinances, and we will continue to adjust to any future developments. It's not a question of whether or not you can have a positive impact during this challenging time. Tesla can have an impact during this challenging time. That doesn't mean they're an essential business. Having stores open can provide help during this challenging time. A hair salon, could be nice for people who haven't had a haircut, but that doesn't mean they're an essential business to the everyday reality of people facing a freaking pandemic. Where where do you get off GameStop? This doesn't make any sense. And then there's also a video that dropped by Camelot331 where he snuck into a conference call between GameStop's executives and their store managers. And it turns out, yes, they're just as insane. They're saying they're taking it day by day and that they don't have any cleaning supplies to send to their stores. So get them yourselves, store managers, because because we can't help you out with that. Oh, and you want sick leave? Well, too bad, you can't have that. And oh, if the store shut down, will you still pay us? Well, we can't make a definitive statement as of what that means right now. This all means, I think this is very blatantly pointing to, not the fact that GameStop is prioritizing profits over people, as Camelot asserts in his video, but rather they're prioritizing the business existing versus not existing. If GameStop shuts down, they will not be able to stay afloat. That's what I think. I don't think they have have enough money left in their coffers to go with a shutdown for a couple of weeks. And so they're trying to ride it out as best as they can, telling their store managers, if police officers come to your store and try to make you close because of the quarantine that's going on, you just tell them to consult GameStop's lawyers and that you're an essential business, which is bull crap, obviously. This is a ridiculous issue that's happening right now. GameStop is saying something that's clearly not true. It's not essential. And I think they know that, but they know that staying open is essential to them surviving and that the people who would get laid off because the store is closed now will be permanently without going back to GameStop. GameStop will stop existing if they have to shut down. That's what I think. What do you think? What do you think of this whole GameStop being an essential business during times such as these? Obviously, video games do help us to get through times where we just have to sit at home, but there's digital downloads. A lot of the ISPs have waived data caps, so you might not necessarily have to deal with not downloading them right now. There's other ways to get around video game playing without the use of a dedicated physical store, which is a piece of crap. Like, I don't know, Walmart who sells food and then can keep the food section open because they're an essential business and you just mosey on over to the game section and pick up a game there. I don't know, that's what I think. Now that my jimmies are all rustled, let's go ahead and resettle them with some Intel news because there's been some GDC news that's been coming out from a bunch of different companies considering the game developers conference was supposed to happen and now they're kind of releasing everything that they weren't able to at the specific conference and Intel is no stranger to that. Coming out with some discussion about multi-adapter integration plus discrete GPUs, talking about how you can take the integrated GPU that's in your Intel CPU and fuse it with a dedicated GPU in preparation for the upcoming Project Z graphics cards that they're gonna be releasing, but they showcased how it would work with like an UHD 630 plus an RX 480, showing that they can work simultaneously. The integrated GPU can take some of the load off of the RX 480 and make it so that it can either do more or be less strain on the GPU itself, which is a cool technology. It's not something new. It 
is kind of new that you can use it with the UHD in such an open manner, which is good. Uh, so we'll just have to wait until Intel actually comes out with dedicated graphics for the mass consumer for this to matter. Speaking of things mattering, Intel's next generation of CPUs, do they really matter? But according to benchmarks, the upcoming i9-10900KF 10-core CPU can beat the current Ryzen 9 3900X with 12 cores in single-threaded performance. It doesn't quite match it in multi-threaded performance, obviously, because the 3900X has 12 cores, whereas Intel has 10, but it is kind of good that they kept it a little close. It's still worse, but it's like within a margin of overclocking close. So the 10900KF can match the 3900X, which means that it's all just gonna come down to price, as it always does, and Intel has not really shown that they care to compete on price. So stay with your 3900X, you're not missing anything, or plan, still plan on upgrading the 3900X, you're not missing anything. If you upgrade to the 10900K, you will be missing PCI Express 4.0 support for those fast SSDs, which Sony came out and said, hey, you PC guys, you don't even have SSDs fast enough for our console, so if you wanna actually show your dominance over consoles with your PC Master Race stuff, you gotta have to, you have to upgrade to PCI Express 4.0 and Intel doesn't offer that right now. What do? I don't know because my brain isn't smart enough to figure it out, which is why Intel is also creating a brain. They have their neuromorphic system. They have a giant server. They said that they now have it with all the chips combined, 100 million neurons. Their cloud-based neuromorphic research community server is huge. It's brain-like. It's big brain time for Intel. Too bad they don't care about their regular consumers like that. And I said that all of this news was coming out about GDC, but it turns out that GDC is planning on hosting GDC Summer in San Francisco, August 4th to the 6th. If obviously Voldemort goes away by then or is significantly diminished, they'll go ahead with that. But it's also possible that this will likely get postponed or canceled as well. Speaking of postponed or canceled, bad segue, Spyro. Spyro the Dragon may have a new game coming according to somebody who tweeted it. So it's not a very, like, very substantial rumor. However, the person who tweeted it has been known for leaks in the past of actual other games. He said a new Spyro game is in the works. I would welcome it. The remake's pretty good. I would like a new Spyro game. Please, Sony. PS5 launch title, thank you. And I thank Facebook, I don't say this very often, I thank Facebook for finally introducing dark mode to the desktop. They were the last standout in the social media apps that I used where I freaking couldn't get a dark mode on the desktop since I only browse Facebook on the desktop because I don't want their app on my phone. So I was holding out for this, it's finally there. The UI update makes it more like a freaking mobile scroll feed, which I'm not a fan of, but it exists and now it has dark mode and I'd rather have dark mode than a more usable UI to be personally honest, perfectly honest. I'm perfectly personal with you guys, and it appears that some people at TSMC have been personal with Voldemort because it has been confirmed that the first employee at TSMC has a case of the Death Eaters, and it's not very good. And it appears that they were in contact with 30 other employees who are now being sent home to be on isolation for 14 days. TSMC obviously is known for making a lot of the computer parts that you enjoy. They make NVIDIA's GPUs, they make AMD's GPUs, they make AMD's CPUs, they make Apple SOCs, they make a ton of stuff. And so if TSMC has to shut down, that's gonna mean even harder times for the PC gaming industry, as well as other industries, to be quite honest. They, they would likely be the producer of the upcoming consoles. And so if TSMC shuts down, consoles get delayed because the SOCs for the consoles can't be produced. We're just hoping that doesn't happen. I hoped that this wouldn't ever happen, this next article. I was, I was hoping that it wouldn't come to this. And that when Voldemort was taking over, that it wouldn't take this from us. But the Samsung stores in the US and Canada have to close. <laughs> Nobody ever went. I don't know where the closest Samsung store is to me, but now they're officially closing, so there you go. And NASCAR is also replacing all of their driving with virtual drives. They're uh, gonna be doing esports related titles. iRacing Pro Internet Invitational Series is happening with the actual drivers doing the virtual driving, which makes sense. It's probably one of the very few video games where real life skill can translate into real into skill in the game whereas basketball players might not necessarily be good at the NBA game they the race car drivers are also using steering wheels it's not going to be perfectly the same but it has the same mechanics and with simulation stuff it could be quite close yeah if you like NASCAR there's a virtual edition of it coming sometime soon speed
And speaking of virtual, playing video games in this hard time, speaking of GameStop not being essential, Final Fantasy is an essential video game series in my life. And it can be in your life too for much cheaper considering the Nintendo Switch is having a Square Enix sale so you can pick up a lot of the titles for much cheaper. Final Fantasy VIII Remastered is going for $12. The Final Fantasy XV Pocket Edition is going for $15. I believe Final Fantasy VII is going for $8. So there's a lot of good pricing on a bunch of Square Enix titles. You can check that out. And you can also check out the tech video of the day, which is again, the Era ITX review from Gear Seekers. Check it out. It's phenomenal. Let them know that UFD Tech sent you. Show them some love. Hit that like button on their video. Get subscribed. Stay up to date with them. And don't forget the existential question of the day, which is, is water wet? Is it? Is water wet? Is water wet or is the presence of water what makes things wet? But if the presence of water makes things wet, then water is present next to water because it's all water molecules, which means it is wet. Ah! What do you do? I don't know. And is this episode of Hot News over? Yes. Just a solid yes and then it ends. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully Jason doesn't sit like that.